Hey guys, it's Taming Doing Love, and welcome back to another episode of the Man to Man Coverage Podcast with my good friend and co host Ben. Hey guys, what's going on? And today we have a special guest, my good friend John, will be joining us today. John, welcome what's to up? the show. Thanks for having me. You know, the last time I did a uh, did a face to face podcast thing, I uh, was four years ago with Fries, and he posted <laughs> it two years later. Classic. <laughs> um, but anyways, today we have a couple topics. Um, the first one being the major NFL news that broke a couple days ago that the Eagles will be starting Jalen Hurts, the rookie quarterback, and that Carson Wentz is now on the bench. So there's a lot of things to talk about here. Um, what's your guys' just general thoughts? I guess we'll start with that. Are you surprised? Are you not? Just kind of your general take on the, the Hurts start against the Saints. You ask me? Uh, both of you. Uh, I'm gonna go first. go first. Um, so my immediate reaction, I'm not, I'm not too thrilled about benching quarterbacks that have these contracts. But um, you know, Hertz looked a lot better than Carson Wentz has the past few weeks. So I mean, it might be the the good move for them in the long run. But you know, I I can't help but feel bad for Carson Wentz. I think the Eagles GM just kind of put him in a spot to fail. They haven't really done anything with the team. In like the past two years, I know we've talked about this a lot, Tanner, but I mean, I've been pretty critical of them not bringing in anything for him to throw to besides Zach Ertz. Uh, but yeah, I think, yeah, you know, I hope that Hertz works out for these guys. Um, it'll give them some room to trade Wentz, get some picks, and then hopefully they can get Hertz some weapons if he ends up being pretty good. All right, John, you go. That was well said, Ben. Uh, it's, 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 it's a bit complicated as an Eagles fan, you know, as a Vikings fan, it's kind of looking outside the box as an Eagles fan, it's kind of in the box, you know, uh, at first I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's, let's get, let's get Jalen Hurts in here, get some reps. And he did get a touchdown. I was pretty hype, but the more I think about it, the more, the more sad I get about it, if you will, because Carson Wentz has been our quarterback and he, he is, he's like led us through a shit ton of. Se- Last year, he carried our team essentially, and that's the thought of him being on the bench. Fucking sucks, but at the same time, he's regressed a lot this year, seemingly. And that's not just the fault of him. The front office is god awful. The coaching staff is god awful. Strength and conditioning is god awful. It's not just his fault, but. I think you do have to see this opportunity and see how Jalen Hurts does while he's in the game. And honestly, I think we'll see a spark for a while, but I don't think it's going to lead to much. I think we're going to see we're going to see the real problems, and that it's not necessarily just the QB. Okay, so good points by both of you. I have a lot to say about this. Um, so. I do agree with you, John, in the sense that it is sad. Carson seems like a great guy, you know, involved with the community. He seems really nice. However, the issue I do have is that you mentioned this stuff about the front office and coaching. I think that's true to a degree. But I think he's really missing a lot of these throws. And that's just not because that's just a fault of his own. I think the hurt start will... Um, be a spark needed for this offense. I think that he looked pretty good against the Packers coming in there off the bench. And I just think this Eagles team and organization is just kind of in a a mess. They're in a deep hole. They're filled, you know, there's just a lot of turmoil there with Uh just not getting things right. So I think Hurts coming in there and just getting a spark is what they need. Um, I think the big question is, is, is this the end of Carson Wentz in Philadelphia? Because for me, you know, have the fans truly loved him? I don't know. You know, you talk about that Super Bowl win, and, you know, a lot of people credit Foles. There's a statue of Foles, and I feel like people have always been up and down with Wentz. The Philadelphia fan base is very vocal, and Wentz has made some really trash mistakes. And I don't know if they're forgiving of that. So 
I don't know if they go back to Wentz. I don't know how he's handling this confidence-wise. I'm just interested to see if he's ever going to start again in Philadelphia and how that will go. I think that's the main question. Yeah, I think that's point. I mean, I think a lot of Carson Wentz's future in Philadelphia really depends on Jalen Hurts in the next, like, what are there, four games left in the season here? I mean, if he's – if he's exceptional, then I think they'll definitely move on from Carson Wentz. But if he's just okay and, you know, he isn't like this standout superstar playmaker, I think they're really going to be in a tough spot like this off season, And they're going to – I think they'll – even if Jalen Hurts is just okay, I still think that what they should probably do because, I mean, I don't like anybody in their front office right now for obvious reasons – but what they should do is they need to get a new front office, maybe a new coach. It doesn't seem like Doug has really been doing all the necessary things to change stuff this year. They've just been kind of doing the same thing every week. And I know he's won a Super Bowl, so maybe I'm being a really hasty with that. But you could bring in a new coach to work with Jalen Hurts, somebody that he wants to work with, um, and then they could bring in guys to help him um, and just kind of rebuild the Eagles, if you will. Um, I could honestly see Wentz. I, there are so many teams that would take Carson Wentz. I mean, he's by no means a bad quarterback. He's just having a bad year. Um, and I think like teams like the Bears or the Colts, even the Patriots maybe, would trade for him in the offseason. Um, maybe even the Panthers, I could see that. I, there's so many teams that I think would want to at least take a chance on Carson Wentz. So this – I mean, really – Jalen Hurts' play over the next four weeks will shape a lot about the Eagles and whatever team ends up trading for Carson Wentz if he gets traded. Um, yeah, I guess. I think speaking of the front office, I think I think it was got up. It was it was pretty stupid to uh, to draft a quarterback in the first place, in my opinion. I mean. Carson Carson Wentz gets injured. Yeah, I'm I'm sure that was like one of the biggest reasons why why they did get Jalen Hurts because Carson Wentz is injury prone. But I think that that's hurt his confidence a lot, and I think that's led to a major regression within Carson Wentz's season. Um, I also did want to say if we're gonna go back to around 2008, I think. Donovan McNabb was uh was benched for a game, I believe, just to uh get his head in the head in shape. So as we see something like that, see put Jalen Hurts in for like a, a game or two, and then see if Carson is gonna work to to play harder, and then we can see that, I guess. And as Ben did say, the cap hit if is it's a big major problem. Either they negotiate his contract or they trade him at this point. And if I to be honest, I think the most likely place is probably the Colts, mainly because Frank Reich is there. Frank Reich was our uh, our offensive coordinator in our uh, Super Bowl winning season. So I'm sure that Carson Wentz and Frank Reich, they have a great relationship. Also, Colts have a way better O-line than we do. So I feel like Carson Wentz had a lot better chance there considering he's not going to get rushed in the first two seconds by the fucking defensive line in the first two seconds of the play. So I think that could have a, that could have a major effect. And I feel like, I, I feel like he'd have a, a much better play in the Colts, if I were to be honest. Okay. So uh, I like what a lot of, both of you guys said. So going back to Ben, um, you said that you think firing Doug Peterson would be hasty – because he won a Super Bowl. I yeah. disagree. I think firing so, him like, would be a good me, choice. Yeah, I think I, a it lot could of... be. It could be, but it also, like, the Super Bowl wasn't that long ago. It was three years ago, and weren't the Eagles, did they make the playoffs? They made or was the that playoffs. the year before? They made the playoffs the last two years. The year after the Super Bowl was the whole yeah. Cody Parkey double doink. But my point is I'm, to deflect that. That's right. Is that Frank Wright? So, but but it's really more like I'm not sure who makes the if if Doug really isn't that involved with who he's bringing on to the team, then I don't think he should be fired. But if he is like really involved with who he gets to bring into the team and he gets to help the GM, 
like, hey, let's go get this guy in free agency, then I think you might want to at least consider it. But I think it's really the GM's fault more than it is Doug's. Sure, he hasn't really made a lot of adjustments, but this is also like his first bad year as a coach. So I think firing him in his first bad year after winning a Super Bowl, mind you, might be a bit too hasty. Well, I, uh, I, I, I want, let me say something real quick. Okay, you can uh, go, John. I don't know if firing is necessarily a thing, but one thing that definitely needs to happen is he needs to be relieved of his duties for calling plays. Mm-hmm. They, need to, they yeah. need to hire an offensive coordinator immediately. Mm-hmm. Calling is so vanilla, and he, he, he thinks he's so cool pulling all these screens when they're seen by a mile away. Oh, let's put Jalen Hurts in. He can run the ball for it. Like he's done that 12 times. Think it's a shock. Um, but I think, I think one of the major leading factors, not fract- factors, was, was Frank Reich himself. The, the, as I just mentioned earlier, I think he was a big reason why we, we had a very good season 2017. And clearly the offensive coordinators that came did not do the same job, at least to the extent that he did. Yeah, um, I think Doug, saying it, it's vanilla's putting it nicely. I mean, it's so predictable, and it's not using the players in a good way. Like, Jalen Rager, I didn't love the pick. It was so-so. But I thought, oh, he's speed. You know, he is fast. They could use him in cool ways, and they really haven't. They did, like, an end around him against with the Packers. That was, like, one good play. I do blame Doug more than than you say you do I just think that he has the play calling for the offense has been terrible like he's not using the people in his correct ways and he's very stubborn like for instance this season he's giving Alshon Jeffrey more snaps than Travis Fulgham I'm not saying that you know like Jeffrey he's not himself he's probably not a starting 50 caliber receiver he's pretty bad and yet you're giving him the majority of snaps over Travis Fulgham who is young and has some potential as we saw earlier in the season with like Pittsburgh and Baltimore and San Fran so I just think that there's a lot of issues with the Eagles I think Howie Roseman needs to go I think Jim Schwartz I'm just sick of his stupid defensive schemes of playing so like like, it's just so, like, calm and really just – it's just frustrating to watch. The lack of personnel this team doesn't invest in linebackers. The corners are, have sucked. Darius Slay was a bust signing and trade. Uh, you know, I just, just – just been so many issues. I think you need a total clean sweep. And I could see them bringing in um, the Bills OC, Brian Dable. I think that could work out well. Or someone with an offensive mind because they they need them. Or do you guys have any head coaching ideas for candidates? It's not really an idea. But I'm just talking more about the offense. I'm pissed off about how much they underutilize the run game. We have like a top twenty running back in Miles Sanders. Potentially even further, he could be, but we just don't we just don't use him. And when we do run the ball. We use fucking Jordan Howard. Like, what the? Yeah, it's I, – I can't believe the Eagles brought Jordan Howard back. I was so upset with that. I I really want him to go back to the Bears. But, yeah, Miles Sanders, um, even when Jordan Howard was there last year, I think he had, like, almost – he had just over 750 yards and wasn't even starting. And to me, that was super impressive. And I know this year he had been just going off until the Eagles really just – I mean, you guys were all right at the beginning of the year and then everything just completely – offense. Um, He's really talented. And I think you could honestly argue he's like a top 12 running back when he's getting the ball in his hands. He's really shifty. Um, He's actually pretty nice out of the backfield too. He's not the best, but he's got some good play he can add in there. And, yeah, I – you guys have to utilize him more. And I know Ertz has been hurt. Goddard's been nice. Um, I don't think me and Tanner have the same opinion on Alshon Jeffrey, but good God, outside of Alsh- or, uh, Zach Ertz and Miles Sanders, there is just nothing on that offense. There is 
I am not envious of a quarterback in that situation. I mean, some of the some of the drops I've seen by Eagles receivers are just so – it reminds me of football. I mean, like, I've caught some of those passes, and I was a running back who couldn't catch. Like, it's – it's bad. It's really bad. It is. I, I think, you know, Ertz is declining. Goddard is – has some nice plays. I will say he is fun to watch. I just feel like I, – I usually like to talk about this show from what I see and my knowledge. But I think there's something going on in this locker room because different people are saying things. People are like, oh, I feel bad for Wentz or, oh, I'm, I'm supporting Hurts. Everyone needs to be on the same page and they're not – I feel I'm glad we won that Super Bowl when we did because ever since then we've been really, yeah, we've been, you know, the year after was kind of cool, but then it was kind of downhill from there. So um, I think we need a culture change. I, I think we need a culture change. Um, maybe J- uh, Jim Harbaugh from Michigan. I don't know about that. Um, Arthur Smith from the Titans. Just someone who can run an offense, use the running backs well. Um, Gary Kubiak would, I think, be really nice. You know, the way he's used Dalvin Cook has been superb. I would love that. Just someone who can call it. I'd be so upset if he left. <laughs> that, would be, that would be Kirk Cousins' like seventh all coordinator in the last seven years. It's, uh, we're not talking about the Vikings, though. But, yeah, I mean, I could see that. I, I don't know if Miles Sanders is a guy who can run the ball as much as Dalvin Cook does because, I mean – Cook takes an absolute beating. He gets like 30 carries a game, and there's not a lot of running backs that can do that. Um, I mean, just look at all the superstar running backs that have been hurt this year. And, I mean, even the ones that haven't been hurt, Ezekiel Elliott's had like four seasons with like 700-plus carries, and now he's just – he's not playing like a superstar anymore. He's just playing like he's good. And – I don't know if Miles Sanders is a guy who can take like 30 carries a game. And I don't know if this offensive line is a team that can run the ball 30 times a game. But, I mean, if you can – yeah, you, you guys are both right. I mean, it's a lot harder for me because I'm not an Eagles fan and they're not on my TV that much. So I really have only watched the Eagles in like a few highlight plays this year, most of them being like drop passes. Um, but, yeah, I think they – Personally, I think – like, I know you guys probably love the defensive linemen because they're really the last good thing you have on that team. I think that they take up way too much of the cap space to not impact the team enough. Like, Fletcher Cox and uh, – who else is there? I Javon think Tim, Hargrave has been Tim such Jernigan. a disappointment. The Steelers Javon Hargrave guy? is on the Eagles? Yeah. Oh, they brought he, he him was pretty in. good with the Steelers. I know, he was, and they brought him in, and he's done nothing. Like one sack. Oh. Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah, but uh, I know <laughs> they've got Jackson Fletcher Cox. Go, but he keeps getting injured. Yeah, Malik, he's pretty old, too. I think there's a couple. Isn't there another defensive lineman that's Timmy making like, a ton of money? Tim Jernigan, yeah. Does, isn't he making a ton of money, too, to just sit know. on the bench? I don't know. Regardless, it's just... I think they need to get rid of those huge contracts. Because need... I remember their defensive line takes up a lot of their contracts. They need to also get rid of Fletcher Cox. Ben, I remember when you and I did the top 100 mm-hmm. players, Cox was on that 50. I'm like, what? Yeah. Last year, I'm like, hold on. He needs to go. Javon Hargrave, terrible move that was made. Well, it's turned out terrible. I liked at the point. <laughs> Co- uh, Brandon Graham can stay. Um, they need oh, to invest. that's the other one. He, he, he really should go. He's taking up a lot of contract space to not really impact the team. And it's not, that, it's not that he's he, a bad he's player. He's like the best. He's like the best one. In, uh... <sighs> yeah, I know. It would be really hard to trade him away. But, I mean, there's so many things that you guys need. And to have two of, like, the top five defensive linemen contracts. Okay, so then, yeah, keep, keep Brandon Graham then and then get rid okay. of Fletcher Cox. Keep one of yes. them. But That's to have, like, two of the top five defensive linemen contracts for them to not help you win is not a good – that's not a winning formula. John, what do you yeah. think about our defense, about our – the cap? Because the defense I mean, has it's been atrocious at moments. The secondary is so bad. And there's there's no other way to put it. They, they struggle – 
they they always they always get burnt. They're they're like pieces of toast. <laughs> no, no. You you said Darius Slay was bad. I will I will rebuttal that a bit by saying he's he's been he's been with the fucking top like ten receivers in in a uh, DK Metcalf. And who's the one on the Packers again? He's losing my Devontae memory. Adams. Devontae Adams. Adams. So that's my little rebuttal, but he's 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 not taking the blame for, for his mistakes, I guess. Well, okay, so I have a rebuttal to that. So he, he did too. He did take the blame for the DK Metcalf game. He's like, I'm not playing my best, that's my worst game. It was, it was terrible. But he, we got him to be a number one corner, and he should be covering number one wide receivers fairly well. I mean, he just got – he was toast against Metcalf and Adams. Avante Maddox, I don't know why he's on this team. The linebacking core is a joke. I mean, seriously. It's seriously terrible. Um, I think the Eagles – Should have kept Sidney Jones. We should have. He's doing well in Jacksonville. Um, what, a, what, a, what a coincidence. Every, every player that leaves Philly does well. Yeah, Nelson Aguilar, Sydney, Sydney, Sydney Jones. Well, Nick Foles is old. <laughs> yeah. we, He's a whole and he gets he gets events, carted off yeah. every two plays. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Nelson Aguilar is having a nice year in the with the Raiders. We can move to that. Like every Eagle. So let's see. Nelson Aguilar is having like a good season. Like I feel like he has five hundred yards. Russell Douglas too. Who's the guy on the Washington football team? Is that Sydney Jones? Who, no, who's the other corner we had? Jalen Mills. No, no, no. It's oh, Jalen Mills is. Don't get me started. Darby. Ronald yeah, Darby. Darby. Darby that's oh, Ronald him. Darby. Isn't he on Washington now? Yeah. 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 So he's part of that up and coming defense there. Yeah. I don't know if he's actually playing well though. He's okay. I feel like, but. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, I feel like the Eagles need to do something because I guess we can transition on to this. We know we had two big NFC East wins recently with Washington beating the Steelers, which take that Juju and your stupid tech talks, and then the Giants beating the Seahawks, um, you know, was just – you know, I feel like this NFC East is up and coming. Like, do you guys believe is that's how those teams are going to play or are those just fluke games or somewhere in between? I think I think one of those is definitely going to win the division. Ben, how about you? Yeah, I think. Hmm, I think the Giants might have been a fluke. They have a really good defense, but their off is what concerns me a bit. Now they played well, but they've been a bit inconsistent. But they've been playing a lot better. Washington, on the other hand, is a team that I trust a lot more. They got a really savvy veteran quarterback who's probably winning comeback player of the year. They've got probably the probably the second best rookie running back on their team right now. They've got a, they've got a couple nice receivers, a nice tight end. Their defensive line and their their linebackers are really good. I don't know about their secondary, but I could I could definitely see Washington finishing like nine and seven. Honestly, I mean the rest of their season isn't too hard. Um, I, I could see them winning the division. New York, yeah, they got I think, us. Could, but <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah, that's going to be interesting. I actually have the Eagles winning that game, though. I think you guys will, will get them back. Um, oh. They're going to demolish. Well, Chase Young's going to, like, break the sack record in, like, one game. He's going to have, like, 50 sacks in, like, the first five minutes of that game. If Jason sure. Peters is yeah. there for sure. <laughs> Yeah, dude, what happened to that offensive line? It's like it's the same dudes from the Super Bowl run. Regression. They're just all playing terrible. Regression. Like, they're they're, all, just, like they're, they're yeah. all just old and crusty. <laughs> yeah, they're all like 38. <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. They, all, they all have like social security. The retirement home basketball team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there's also the Cowboys, which I know we all hate, and they lost pretty bad to the Ravens, but – I mean, they're up and coming in a sense with C.D. Lamb and other players, I guess. That's not on the defense. I don't know. I'm just always going to count the Cowboys out of the playoffs every <laughs> single year. Like, there's This no, is our anytime, year. This is our year. Yeah. Anytime the media says the Cowboys are gearing up for the Super Bowl, I'm like, all right, so they're going 7-9 and nine and missing the playoffs. Nice, nice. 
you know. They're, and honestly, they're worse than seven. Like if it was if it was Madden, their roster at the beginning of the year was like really good, but man, are they awful at putting together like a comprehensive unit? They just they never have any chemistry. I'm not the biggest Amari Cooper fan because he doesn't go up and get like pos- like possession catches. He's just really fast in my opinion, and he's a good route runner. Um, but I I just he's not what I would want in the number one. But C D Lamb does a lot of that. They've got a bright future on the offense. I don't know what's going on with the defense. They're just – they're atrocious. I think with the Cowboys, I think – I think I think this season is going to make them appreciate Dak much more. Yeah. It's unfortunate for Dak, though, because he's definitely not going to get the contract he wants. He's going to get franchise tag. Yeah, I, well, Andy Dalton's played okay. I actually thought he would do better because, remember – Ben, you and I would always say, oh, Dak's like Andy Dalton. Clearly, that's not the case. Ben um, is clearly not like that. He's fine. We also have Ben DiNucci, the GOAT. Um, we almost had Garrett a, Gilbert. Um, Garrett Gilbert played decent, better than Dude, Carson He almost Lawrence. beat the Steelers. Mm-hmm. Mike Glennon. Mike Glennon. Okay, someone had this idea, and that is, I, I wouldn't mind Jay Gruden being the coach of the Eagles, because he's done pretty well in Jacksonville, being the OC. But anyways, I'd be interested to see if Dak's going to be a Cowboy. I feel like he is. That's just like a very Jerry Jones move to do. Unless they finish really bad and get like a Zach Wilson or a Justin Fields. I could see Justin Fields to the Cowboys. They'd have to finish pretty darn low. I mean, how many teams are below them right now that need a quarterback? Well, I mean, do you guys think that Washington? The Jets. The Jets for sure are taking a court. Yeah. Okay. There's no way they're not. And if they don't, they're going to get, like, New York is going to be on fire. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you guys think Washington is going to take a quarterback? I, I think they will. They might start Alex Smith and just kind of have him do the Ryan Fitzpatrick thing. But, I mean, Alex Smith is probably – he's going to be 37 next year. I mean, that's – that's not like a long term answer. I think they'll draft the quarterback and let Alex Smith take him under his wing and then develop him and then when the time yeah. comes. So we have the Jets, they probably go Trevor Lawrence. Jacksonville, unfortunately, they go They're Justin probably Fields. Take a quarterback. Cincinnati yeah. probably goes Penne Sewell, the O line. Cowboys Paul they, I could see them going like a defense person. Chargers, probably not. So do you guys think the Eagles should take a quarterback at six, go like Zach Wilson or another person huh. at six? No. 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 The, I mean, you saw that turn out this season. Yeah, that was an absolute True. disaster. Putting like the predicament that you guys are in right now, I'm not envious of that. <laughs> um, I could see the Eagles going. I would love them if they went with Jamar Chase, the the wide receiver. I think out of LSU. We need a yeah. no. We need a corner. Oh, yes. Patrick Sertan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, wide receivers aren't terrible. Rager's fine. Fulgham's fine. Ward is well. Okay. I don't know. Fulgham just disappeared this last weekend. Held the zero catches. He's all right. He's had his games, but I mean, he's been in some of those. Fulgham missed the games. wide ass catch. Yeah. He was open as shit. He missed it. Yeah, it's. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think Rieger and Fulgham might be nice, but you got to get somebody else in there. Like, if you're going to have those two as uh, – did John leave? <laughs> John's like, this team sucks. I'm out of here. I think he might have <laughs> lagged out. Um, Anyways, we'll continue. Um, Man, I would hate if Jacksonville went with a quarterback – they're, they're most – oh, his computer died. Oh, that's – Well, we're about to end the episode, I think, anyways. Yeah. Um, honestly, the Eagles, they could draft literally any position, and I think it would help them, except running back. I don't think that would help them very much. But you could get a left tackle, a right tackle, a guard, a center, and it would help you. I mean, most of your starters are not starting on another NFL team. Uh, maybe the Jets, mm. but uh, that actually might be a stretch. I can't see a lot of these guys starting on the Jets. Um, the Jets are better. Like, that Raiders game was crazy. 
mentioning that. Yeah. They have yeah. some, at least, like, some respectable players. Superstars anymore with no Jamal Adams. Oh, here we go. Here comes John. There we go. I really hope the Jaguars don't take a quarterback. I would hate they're, that. They're going to. But welcome go back, ahead. sir. I'm on my phone now. All right. Hey, welcome back, John. Ooh, look at that nice haircut. My head looks like a mop, and John here is he looks It really so does. Guys. It really does. <laughs> that's a that's a perfect way to describe it. It really does. <laughs> um. Uh, I really. That's like it looks like it was cut by your mom. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. The keyword is what it looks like. <laughs> I know. I look like a bird dog. I'm gonna have the wing cap and take off. Look like and a fucking was... munchkin. <laughs> um. Yeah, the Jaguars will probably go Justin Fields. I wouldn't like that. I could see the oh, Lions. Gee, Mike Lennon. I could see the Lions going. QB. They, they, I, I, I hope they do. I hope they do. I want them to trade Matthew Stafford so bad. I love Matthew Stafford, but I hate the Lions so much because of how much they've wasted his career. And like that's coming from a Vikings fan. I feel so bad for Matthew Stafford. I, uh, I hope he gets traded to like the Falcons and wins like a Super Bowl or something. I don't know. I don't know if that would happen, but. Get him out of Detroit, man. He, there's no he. I don't think he wants to be there anymore. Anyways, it's <laughs> he's got to hate that place by now. Exactly. Um, the real question is who would. That's true. Yeah. So I have a question, real quick. So the yeah. other the other day in the fantasy group ch- group chat, I said that the Saints are the best NFC team, and you guys had some interesting reactions, to say the least. Um. Do you guys think the Saints are the number one? It just one gives me flashback to the – I was just thinking at the time that the Saints got their asses whooped by the Buccaneers. Wait, the Saints won against the Buccaneers? Did they? Yeah, both times. Yeah, they beat them twice this year. Uh, Maybe must have been the, Buc- the week regardless, after that they got their I don't, handed. Yeah. Oh, I don't yeah. think they're the best team. Uh, not even close. I – Sure, they've got all the wins and stuff, but I don't believe in them in the playoffs. They're just gonna choke again. It's the Vikings. bound to happen. If we sneak There's in and steal the Cardinals ball, spot, yeah, it's over. Like the Saints are not winning that game. And I'm gonna rub it in all of their faces when it happens. We'll it's probably... my favorite part of the year, you know. Come <laughs> January, I just get to trash on it is... Instagram. It's the best. It is pretty fun. Has interference. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Stiff arm. Um, John, who do you think is the best yeah. NFC team? I might go for the Packers. They just don't have anyone outside of Devontae Adams. It's like Devontae Adams. I wish I could say the Seahawks, but they lost to the Giants, so I cannot say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's the NFC is really wide open. I think it's the Packers personally, even though I don't think they're like I don't know. I still I I think it doesn't really matter who makes it to the Super Bowl in the NFC. I think the Chiefs are winning the Super Bowl. It's, State Farm Super Bowl, that would be dope. That's what I actually think it's gonna be. I, I think the Packers will I think they have the least amount of weaknesses State, out of the State NFC State teams. Farm Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, whichever one he wins gets so double the ads in the off season. <laughs> John, what did you say? We're just having that last year. Oh, yeah. Everyone was so mad. because uh, I, I thought they were rigging it to make it that last year. <laughs> <laughs> the grand conspiracy state. Also because also the first ever Super Bowl was the Chiefs against the Packers. Yeah. True. That would be cool to have this season with the year we've had. It'd be like, oh, it's Packers, Chiefs. Well, it, would... was like, it was like NFL 100, so it makes sense. Yeah. Though. True. I wouldn't mind um, Steelers Saints, Big Ben, Drew Brees, Sean Payton, Mike Tomlin going at it, and they like both QBs. No, the Steelers are going to get out the first round like the Ravens did last year. Yeah, they're probably going to lose to the Titans or something ridiculous, like some team that they probably shouldn't lose to, but they will. Colts or the Dolphins? Ooh, I could see. Yeah, I could see that. I could see the Dolphins beating them. The Colts, maybe. Uh, I mean. 
The Colts really, it all depends on how Phillip Rivers plays these last few weeks. I think he's been better, like, the last four weeks because, like, the beginning he was kind of eh. He was okay. But he's been playing a lot better. Um, I hope the Saints don't make the Super Bowl. That would be kind of boring. All they do is throw it to Alvin Kamara and then hand it off to him. And then they throw it to Michael Thomas, and he gets upset that he didn't catch it. And, yeah, it's – the the Saints are the last team I won in the Super Bowl. I hope they lose in like the first round to like the Cardinals or the Vikings or whatever other team is in there that they should beat. I I would like the Saints just for the fact that Drew Brees has another chance because I love Drew Brees. I think he deserves another shot. Um, I would like to see Russell Wilson go back because the whole oh you know how they're gonna get there. Let Russ cook. The salt and the pepper. Yeah, but he basil. can't help cook the other team most of the time. <laughs> My Food Network, Gordon Ramsay, is the referee. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's pretty much like Russ is like, yeah, Ruff, Russ is like Gordon Ramsay in a kitchen, and then the the team playing the Seahawks is like an American with a flamethrower in a Japanese bunker. Like, they're just absolutely <laughs> just roasting the defense. It's... I mean, it's insane. They're so bad. Um, I, uh, yeah, I mean, this, I was just, you know, another shot for us. Um, the Rams going back for a second time I think could be interesting. I could see that. That's my dark horse Super Bowl contender. They really – they've surprised me. They've been a lot better than I thought they would mm-hmm. be. I mean, I had them going like 9-7 and seven before the draft year. But I, they, their defense has been a lot nicer than I thought. Jalen Ramsey and Aaron Donald, mm-hmm. best defensive duo in the league. Mm-hmm. And they're just they're crazy good. I really did not see it coming. I don't know why, but their offense, if Goff can keep his turnovers down, is usually pretty efficient. I could totally see them being in the Super Bowl again. John, what about you? Could you see the Rams back in it this year? I don't want to see him back in it, but <laughs> I mean, their defense is pretty good. Goff, eh, but yeah, I mean, the last time they only scored three points, but oh well, what can you do? Yeah, they, no, they scored zero points, right? No, they scored three. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that whole that whole Super Bowl Super Bowl sucked. Um. What if we got a Rams Chiefs Super yeah. Bowl? Nick Foles is still the last person to score an NFC touchdown after that game. Oh, in the you're Super Bowl. Right. Oh, you're right. Um, do y'all think the Chiefs are going to be the AFC representative? I could see it, but I also couldn't. I could see another team taking the spot. The, the only Chiefs? other team I could see taking their spot is the Titans. Really? I want the Titans to be there last year. Same, dude. I was rooting for them so hard. I don't think – because Pittsburgh lost to Washington and almost lost to the Cowboys and almost lost to the Ravens with, like, RG3 and Tracy McSorley. I, Throw it on the I, I don't, I'm like, I mean. I, yeah, I don't think the Steelers are going to win the important game that they need that to. That was not amused by that. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, I – don't know what Tanner's talking about here, but what? Um, I, was I know there's like a song. There's like a song, but I haven't heard it, so I don't really know. Yeah, I've seen the Trick McSorley song, but you haven't heard it. No, I what? don't have time to listen to every song that exists. It's like fifty seconds. I don't. I just listened to it because I, I saw it in a video. I'm like, what is this? Um, Tanner, how do you think your uh, chances are of your little bandwagon Ravens team? Zero. Okay. Um, so, first of all, not bandwagon. Second of all, I'll agree with Ben. Zero. They're um, not making the playoffs. I don't think so. Even if they do, I think they're out round one. I don't think it's Lamar's fault. He's had a fine season, like a B-minus type of season B. He's had some exciting plays, but he just doesn't have – the wide receivers are not stepping up. The defense is nice, but at times they're inconsistent. The offensive line is okay. I don't see them making it. I think that they need to get, like, a Allen Robinson, Julio Jones. Wait, did you say the defense is okay? No, the offensive line. Oh, okay. 
I was like, y'all have like the second best defense in the league right it's now. It's pretty good. There's some times where it's like okay, it's times where it's okay, but it's pretty good. Um, I don't think Baltimore makes. My favorite it. player on the defense of the Ravens is Earl Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, in all seriousness, uh, I I don't think the Ravens make it at all. Or even if they do the out round one, I could see them losing to like the Dolphins. I think the Bills could be a Super Bowl contender. Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, Cole Beasley coming out of nowhere. I mean, that dude looks – I don't know. I just really – Don't hit on Beasley. He's, he's pretty nice with it. Him that's what and John I said. Brown too. Who's – uh? they've got some other guy that's been playing more recently. Gabriel Davis, is that his name? Oh, yeah. He's been play- He's been playing nice. They also – Knox too. He's pretty nice. Uh, yeah, the Bills. I wouldn't be I can, shocked to see the Bills beat the, the Steelers. Yeah, I I could see that. I really could see anybody beating the Steelers. They I, they haven't really impressed me that much. Yeah, I don't know. I think I like the Steelers more than y'all do, but I um. But he I hates Juju. Oh, don't get me yeah. started. Don't get me started. <laughs> um. Anyways, I, I don't know. The Bills, like, with their offense is really good, their defense is decent enough. Um, I could see them going to the Super Bowl. I predicted a Bills-Seahawks Super Bowl, Ben. Remember that? Yeah, I did. And then I told you you were nuts for putting the Seahawks in there. And I still think it would be nuts to put the Seahawks in there. Yeah, I would change it to, like, Bills-Packers. I, I don't know. I could just see that. I could see that. I honestly – I just – as much as I want a different team besides the Steelers to be in the Super Bowl, I don't know if he's going to beat the Chiefs unless the Raiders somehow make it to the playoffs, but I don't <laughs> think they're going to at this point. Ben uh, still has hope in the Raiders. That's cute. I do. I. They have a lot of hard games left, though, so mm-hmm. we'll see. I mean, they got smoked by the Falcons and Baylor. The Raiders almost the lost to the Jets. Yeah, they <laughs> all, that's, that's kind of like it for me. I'm like, all right, well – and for this reason, I'm out. Um, can yeah. we just talk about how much the Cardinals fell off? They fell off the they fell off the Grand Canyon. I told you they were going to be this year's Browns, and they are. They're oh, you're, overhyped. You're right, Ben. You're and it's right. because Cliff Kingsbury doesn't run the ball enough. It's mm. and he calls too many screens. It's it's so <laughs> weird. He like he's got a lot of really unique plays, but. I they need to get a power back next year to do what can cannot because he's nice and shifty. Chase Edmonds is nice at catching and stuff, but they don't have anybody who can power through that. Like people forget because Kyler Murray can run around so much that uh, the Cardinals' offensive line is much since Josh Rosen was the quarterback, and we were like dead last in offensive line play. They still suck. I mean. You just have to look at the yards per carry for the running backs. It They need some help there. But I think if they get a good power back that can break off a few tackles, they might be better next year. But I think they were a little bit overhyped this year. And they, I still think they'll make the playoffs just because of the lack of competition for, like, the seventh seed. Because as there's no way the Vikings are making it. Like, well, love never them. Know. The only other team that no, they're not. They're not gonna make it. Why not? Who, I mean, they who could. else did they play this year? I wrote this down. They could that, beat they're Tampa not gonna Bay. Make it. They're not beating Tampa Bay. There is literally no way. We have the worst corners in the league. We have. We're starting three rookies. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, and know. then we gotta play the. We'll beat the Bears, and then we gotta play the Lions. Like that's there is no way we are winning three of those games. Like yeah. the Cardinals, they got they got the Eagles, the Niners, and then the Rams and the Packers. But I think they'll handle the Niners and Eagles, and I don't think the Vikings are gonna beat. I don't think they're gonna beat New Orleans, and they certainly are not beating Tampa Bay off a bye week. So oh yeah, it's. I don't know. And then there's no other team that's competing for that other spot. They all suck. So, I mean. True. Um, I just want to say that um, b- before this, I, uh, this whole season I've been saying that an NFC East team 
who is going to win a playoff game. And I think after this week, that's becoming a bit more true of Washington being the Steelers and the Giants winning. That that was a nice bit of confidence. I, I'll still go by that. Whoever wins the NFC East will win one playoff game. Um, John, do you have anything to add before I think we ended off here? Uh, not really. I think. I think Washington's going to win the uh, the NFC East. Not very shallowly, but they're going to win. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Well, John, thanks for joining us on this episode of the podcast. Uh, could have you back sometime. You and Tiju on the same episode. That would be cool. Probably. Um, and then, Ben, once again, thanks for joining me. Sure, man. It was a pleasure. Uh, this was a fun one. Uh, season's getting more interesting, and we'll be here to cover it. So I'll talk to you. See you all later, and have a good one.